my presentation is called an, an alternative way to think of thinking about innovation. Right. Now, one important thing is Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago ranks 55th out of 132 countries in the UN's most innovative small countries list for 2009 and 2010. Now, what that means for us is that our people are unlikely to discover or create new technology quickly or in any reasonable time frame. This, on the other hand, is a buffalipso. I don't know how many of us have seen a buffalipso, but I'm sure all of us here have heard of a buffalipso. It's a Trinidadian in creation by a man called Dr. Stephen Bennett. Now, the creation of the buffalipso has revolutionized the livestock industry the world over. Its meat, its milk, and its hide have been used through all over the world to produce mozzarella cheese, high-quality steaks, and high-quality leather. Now, my idea is about how we can cultivate and create innovators like Dr. Stephen Bennett in Trinidad and Tobago with as little effort as possible. This is the meat of the matter, the national innovation function. My assertion is innovation, which is iron, is a function of investment, competition, the personal environment, and the social mindset of the, of the nation at that point in time. Now, due to time constraints, I won't be able to go into all of the variables listed, but I'll take out the two most important ones to discuss. Now, when you're talking about innovation, investment has a part to play, because without funding, obviously, you wouldn't, wouldn't be able to spend money on research or tools or the relevant technology we need in order to create new goods and services. And all around the world, Financial institutions such as banks and governments do lend money to budding innovators to create their projects. Now, the thing about Trinidad and Tobago and the wider Caribbean, especially, is that our financial markets, in our financial markets, our interest rates do not reflect the state of the market. Now, I'll give you all an example. During the recession last year, investors were running to Australia to save their money by investing in, in schemes that would give them 1% interest. While in Trinidad, banks were giving us 2% interest and charging 7 and 8% interest on loans. Now what that means is that a bank has 5% interest to take home. That is an unbelievably wide margin for any country, especially during a, re a recession like the crash of 2009. Now, what I'm saying is to combat this, we need proper regulatory framework because at the end of the day, we can't have that kind of predatory lending occurring and driving people into holes which they can't get themselves out of and holes where they are stifled and their ability to create and think is being pushed down by big business and men who just want to make a quick buck. Now, what I'm saying is also, aside from regulatory framework to manage banks and other predatory lending institutions, what we need to do as well is to provide these banks with incentives to lend to crazy ideas and let the government or another independent body provide soft loans which these people can go through, can access and develop their ideas or not because at the end of the day, what we are looking for with innovation is a way to produce goods cheaply and a way to produce goods more effectively, and a way to produce goods in a way that is better for the environment. Now, due to time constraints, as I've said, these two policy prescriptions are just the tip of an iceberg of a lot of changes that need to be made if this is to continue, if this is to come to fruition. Now, this is the other thing that I thought I needed to talk about, the social mindset. The social mindset of a population. My definition for it is the collective idea or the paradigm under which a country, the collective paradigm of a country, I should say. Now, this would dictate the way we interact with a lot of things in our community. 
especially innovation. One example of this, as I was looking through, was the steel pan. It's our national instrument, but how many people know that when the steel pan first came out, people didn't like it, people, didn't, people didn't really didn't care for it. The steel pan was no, things that people, like poor children love and still used to play, and used to encourage violence with steel pan wars or whatever. But as time progressed, what, ha what we found was the steel pan was a part of our culture, it was us. And we took it, we labeled it Trinidadian, and now it's our national instrument, played all around the world, and Trinidad is known for the steel pan. However, not all innovations have been that lucky. Dr. Bennett is, on a, is one example. The man inv basically invented buffalo lip soup, which had more meat than ordinary water buffalo, had better quality milk than ordinary, ordinary water buffalo. It was basically superior to water bu ordinary water buffalo in many ways. However, what happened is that although the project was initially, st initially widespread throughout Trinidad, other countries took it, took it away from them. They took it, they developed it, they enhanced it, but at the end of the day, we down here, we neglected it. We used to have a herd of over 3,000 water buffalo, uh, 3,000 buffalo, so, sorry. And as of today, our herd is just, uh, just about 300. Now, in the US, in India, in Canada, in Australia, these people have taken a Trinidadian innovation, a Trinidadian invention, and what they've done is that they have took it and they have marketed it and they have branded it their own, and they have reaped the rewards of it. Right. So, the question now becomes, how do you change the social mindset of a population? And that is a very tricky question. But the answer is education and an increased standard of living. Now, what I have here is a graph that shows the relationship between income inequality and the patterns per million of population of different countries. And what you see is that the lower the income inequality, or the higher the income equality, the more innovative and the more productive the, pe the, the people are. So for example, you have Finland, Sweden, Norway, Austria at the top. And coming down to the end, you have places like the USA, which has a very high unemployment and poverty rate, regardless of what they may tell you. You have places like Belgium and France and Spain and Canada, which are not undeveloped countries or underdeveloped countries. They just have a very wide income distribution gap. Now, what this means is that in order to become a serious, innovative country where we can create, where we can create something that's inherently Trinidadian, that will benefit us, and then export it to the rest of the world. We need to bridge the gap between the 14 or 15 percent of people stricken with poverty in Trinidad and Tobago. We need to find some way to increase their standard of living, because what this graph shows is that people's innovative capacity increase as they as their standard of living rises. So basically, what they're saying is, if you don't have to study where your next meal coming from, if you don't have to study where you're sleeping tonight. You could redirect your energies somewhere else and perhaps do something else.